Okay, if you struggle with number 45, we're gonna go over it. Choose the system of inequalities that best matches the graph below. Now remember with inequalities and uh, with graphs, we need to remember how to graph each symbol. You know, the greater than or equal to and less than or equal to is always gonna be a solid die, uh, line, excuse me, and the greater than or less than symbols are gonna be dotted lines. So when I'm looking at this graph, the first thing I would do if you didn't remember slope intercept form, is I would look at, okay, I have two solid lines, which means I'm gonna have to have two equations with symbols like this, um, which helps me to rule out B because of the second equation, helps me to rule out C because of the first equation. So always try to rule out some answers that you, are, that you know are incorrect if you don't know which one's the correct one. Now, um, I try to remember slope-intercept form. So if you remember y equals mx plus b, remember that m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. So looking at these equations, they're in slope-intercept form. Let's look at a and d and see if we can figure out which one, which equation has to be correct just by looking at the y-intercepts. This graph is going to intersect at a negative 2, and this graph is going to intersect at a negative 1. Whereas D is going to intersect at a positive 2, and um, the Y down here, Y is already isolated. There's no B, so it's actually a plus 0. It's going to intersect at 0 on the Y axis. Once your equations are in slope-intercept form, Y equals. Y is isolated. You know where the Y intercept is going to be just from looking at the equation. So look at these graphs. This line intersects here at a negative 1, and the second line intersects here at a negative 2, which tells me that my answer must be A. So I did process of elimination here. I could then check the slopes. The first equation is going up 1 over 1. I'm going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. That looks good. The second equation is going down 2 or down 2 over 1. So I'm going 1, 2, over 1, 1, 2, over 1, 1, 2, over 1. A is correct. If you struggle with 46, it's very similar to 45. Which graph shows the solution set of the system of inequalities? Um, you can always try a point from the solution region and see if it works in that equation. You can also uh, take a look at the equations and do what we did with 45, which is Look at the symbols. These symbols, both of them, are going to be dotted lines. So when you're looking at your graphs, you can rule out B because they're not dotted lines. You can rule out C because they're not dotted lines. The only way you have a solid line is if you have a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to. So if you remember that, now you have a 50-50 chance of getting correct. Let's come up with the equation for these lines. Remember Y equals MX plus B. M is your slope, B is your y-intercept. So let's look at these graphs. This equation here has a y-intercept of negative 6. And what's my slope? Up 1, it looks like it's going right there, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. Yes, so my slope is a positive 1, x, and my b is a negative 6 for that one equation. Now that would be the equation, but I need an inequality symbol. So I already know it's going to be a less than or greater than because it's dotted. Take a look at the shading. For this line, the shading is below it. So I know that the symbol then must be y is less than because it's below the line, it's less than the line. Now looking at that equation, I'm pretty sure that A is going to be the correct answer, but let's check the other equation. Again, where is your y-intercept? Well, it intersects the y-axis right here at 0, and then count your slope. This one's not quite going all the way over 1. It looks like it's exact point here and here. So it's a down 2 slope over 1. Down 2 over 1. So my slope is a negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2. And my y-intercept, or my b, is 0. Then my slope-intercept form, plugging it into here, would be y and then negative 2x plus 0. Compared to that line, where is the shading? Well, the shading's on this side. 
So it would be over on this, on the right side of the line, which is where y is greater. So your two equations match graph A. Number 47, Tyreek always leaves a tip between 8% and 20% for the server when he pays for his dinner. This can be represented by the system of inequality shown below, where y is the amount of tip and x is the cost of dinner. Now one thing, I, I did fix this on some of them. I'm not sure if they fixed on all of them. If you have 0 0.02, change that please to 0 0.20. So that is representing that it's, he leaves more than 8% tip, but less than a 20% tip which the following is a true statement. When the cost of dinner is $10, the amount of tip must be between $2 and $8. Well, let's try this. X is the cost of dinner. 10 is the cost of dinner. Put 10 in for X and see if that's what you get. If I do Y is greater than 0 0.08 times 10, and Y is less than 0.2 times 10, see if you get $2 and $8. You can use your calculator here. Here you're going to get y is greater than 0.8, which is not $8, but 80 cents, really. And here you're going to get y is less than $2. So does this match your work? No, A is ruled out then. What about B? When the cost of dinner is $15, the amount of tip must be between $1.20 and $3. Well, let's try that. So cost of dinner is 15, put 15 in here. If you have 0 0.08 times 15, the tip should be greater than that, or, or and really, less than 0.2 times 15. Use your calculator. All I did was substitute, and I use your calculator. 0 0.08 times 15 is 1.2, and 0.2 or 2 tenths times 15 is 3. So should the cost, should the amount of tip be between $1.20 and $3? Yes, the correct answer then is B. You could try C and D as well, but they uh, do not work out to be correct. When you do C and D though, they're, now they're giving you the tip. So if you were to do it, you would have to put this in for y and you have to solve for x. The correct answer here is b. Okay, number 48. Fly With Us owns an airplane that has seats for 240 people. The company flies this airplane only if there are at least 100 people on the plane. So this is the total number of seats. This is like the maximum amount that they could have, right? They only have a 240 seats. They can't have 250 people on the plane. That won't work. But they only use this plane if there are at least 100 people. Remember what that at least means. That's like a minimum value. But it's, it's actually saying not, it's actually saying we'll include 100 or more, right? If you have to be at least 13 years old to get into a restaurant, then if you're 13, you can get in. If you're less than that, you cannot. Write a compound inequality to show the possible number of people in a flight on this plane. Let n represent the possible number of people in the flight. Graph the solutions. So I would just try to think, okay, well, they can't have more than 240, so the number of people has to be less than 240. But think about it. Can they have every seat full? Yes. Then they can also be equal to 240. But the other end of that, they only fly it if there's at least 100 people, or 100 people or more. So n, reading from the n direction, n has to be greater than 100 people, but it does include that. So we would have n is greater than or equal to 100 and less than or equal to 240. The correct answer here then is a, it's right next to that, and there's my and inequality. Again, I would want the filled in circles because I can fill up the plane all the way and I can fly it if I have a minimum of 100 people. So those values need to be included. 